Hey guys, how are you all? Hope everyone is doing well. Hope you're all surviving the cold winter that you guys, for those of you that are up north, are experiencing. Um, weather here has it's warmed up again, um, but last week it was one of, on some of the nights the low was like in the 50s, and the high was like high 60s, almost 70. And so that, you know, for, for everyone here, that's, that's like really cold <laughs> um, because everybody's used to the heat here. But I was actually happy for that, um, to get a, you know, a break from the heat. And, um, but it's warmed up again. So now it's like in the high 70s again. And um, it's just, to, for me, that's a little too soon to be in the high 70s because this is just February. I mean, if that's what it's like now, or that means, it, you know, just, it may be super, super hot this summer, but I'm praying, no, that it will not be super, super hot this summer. But anyway, so what I've been, have I been up to, um, I wasn't able to record last week. There really wasn't anything for me to show. I haven't made a whole lot of progress on my shawl. I will show you that in a bit. And um, so I was just like, I'll just um, wait until I have some more to show, at least progress-wise on my shawl. But, um, so what have I been up to the last two weeks? Um, I colored my hair. Um, obviously, you don't really see a difference. It's um, one of the, I guess, semi-permanent, or I don't even know if it is a permanent one. It may have been, but, you know, obviously on my dark hair, it's not really going to show. And I was, you know, I knew that going into it. Um, what I bought, what I used was the Revlon Color Silk in a, I think it was called, I can't remember that on the color. I think it was burgundy. Um, but it's, but my husband does say that in, in a certain light, in the sunlight and stuff, you can see this like dark reddish burgundy color um, on my hair. So, but I, I have not been able to find and I, I can't remember the color I used or the brand that I used way back when, when I was in high school. And it, it really showed up even on my dark hair in like the house light. You could see, like a, there was a picture of me and I no longer have that picture, but I remember it. And it was like, even in the house light, you could see this, this like burgundy color over my hair, um, over my dark hair. And um, the, the conditioner in that, in that one, was really really good my hair felt so soft and smooth and um, I just wish I remembered the brand that I used and who knows if they even still make it but um, I have not been able to find anything similar since and um, but hey if, if any of you guys who have dark hair and don't like bleaching and don't want the you know harsh chemicals and have found something that works well on your dark hair please let me know um, I've been watching a lot of videos and it seems like really the um, only way for it to really show up on dark hair is if you lighten your hair first, which I'm trying not to do. I'm just trying to find the one that I used way back when and when I was in high school in the 90s that worked really well and showed up well on my hair, you know, because I, 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 I'm not really trying to totally change my hair color, but I guess like a, you know, highlight or something like that. But anyway, um, there is like, I've seen, there is like, they call a hair makeup. And I may try that nowadays, but it's kind of like a one-time use only and it washes right out. So I'm trying to find something that's semi-permanent, permanent, without the harsh chemicals that will work on my dark hair and just give me that, that um, highlight of a color that even in, in indoor light, you can see the color. Um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But, um, and, and I, I go towards the burgundy, wine, dark red kind of color. But um, yeah, um, maybe I'll take a picture of myself and so you guys can see what, it might, what it, my hair would look like in the sun currently. Um, I actually have to look at it myself, so I'm hard to see. But my husband and my, my daughter sort of said that they could actually see it at one point when the, the way the sun hit, hit my hair, that they could totally see the red color in my hair. So, but anyway. And so, um, oh, and just so you know, I do all my videos with timestamps. I go in after um, I publish it and timestamp my videos so that way 
if you're not interested in the chit chat, you can go straight to what you're interested in, crochet and stuff like that. And so I break it up and I mark um, at each time, you know, like I said, the timestamp. So if you go into the description, you'll see how I have it broken up into what I'm talking about in the video. So if you want to skip this part, you want to go to the crochet, just click the description and to where I talk, where I, what, where I will mark crochet talk or whatever, um, then you can just click that and it'll take you directly to that, that section of the video. So it um, makes it a lot easier for you guys if you're not interested on in the certain segments that I have from my podcast. So anyway, um, the other thing I've been up, been up to is we finally have been able to get started on our reselling business here. Uh, mainly online, not that they have a shop yet. We're just starting small with what we have. We bought a um, liquidation palette, and it was mainly, you know, um, lawn tools. Nothing exciting, nothing really cool to unbox or anything like that. But um, we're just going for something that we know will pretty much guarantee us sales because lawn equipment is very needed. There are a lot of landscapers here, and you know, weed whackers. Um, leaf blowers, uh, chainsaws, things like that. And um, so from my, what my husband calculated to what we will sell it, sell it for those items here, uh, should definitely net us, uh, should definitely give, get us double our money back. Um, and so we already, too, we already checked out all the equipment. We, all, we have a few new items and some of them are used, some were not working, so we're gonna see if we can fix them. Um, but even with the ones that are broken and the ones that are used, he calculates we should be able to get our, we should be able to double our money back. So yay for that. Um, and then once we do, too, once we get our investment back, we're gonna immediately invest that back and buy a new palette. And so that's kind of what, that's kind of our business going that we're, um, have, that we're doing here. Um, to really help bring in some income. And so yeah, that's kind of what we've been busy the last couple of days with, especially taking pictures and listing it and things like that. So, and um, I, I did get, I did have time to do crochet, um, but still not quite there yet to finishing it because it's an item that I wanted to gift um, to one of our to one of our neighbors, and I'm excited to finally get it finished. But I'm still I think about halfway there. Now on to the giveaway roundup for this week. I have first one up is Creative Grandma. How many of you guys watch her? Um, I'll be doing a mix of the big channels and the smaller channels. I'll be you know I like to focus more on the smaller channels to help give them good you know, to help get them some traffic their way. But um, I just I do definitely wanted to also shout out Creative Grandma. She always has some great giveaways and uh, I love her yarns I mean uh, yeah her yarn swatches like I love those videos where she do, takes a certain uh, kind of yarn and she buys a whole bunch of different colorways for that particular yarn and does yarn swatches just to see show you how they work up um, I find that really helpful so give her if you don't already subscribe to her check her out and she has some great giveaways going on currently right now I think three going on all at the same time, or maybe even four. And the next one is Twin Stitches Design. I just recently discovered her. Um, she mainly does knitting, and um, she has a giveaway of some hobby yarn, or hobby, hobby yarn, so go check her out. Next up I have is Big Crafter. Um, go give her a like, subscribe, check her out. Um, she does a giveaway weekly on each of her podcasts when she puts them out. And I love her channel for the great information that she puts out. Um, I learned from her that you can go to thrift stores, buy like the largest size sweater that you can find in cotton, I guess, or whatever um, fiber that you like. If you can find cashmere, I'm sure that'd be really awesome. Um, and she takes it and she tear, takes them apart. She unravels them and uses the yarn for what she wants to make out of it. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and uh, so if you never thought of that, hey, that's a you know, great idea. Definitely cost saving, you know, I mean, because if you think about it, if you go to the thrift store, um, Goodwill, Salvation Army, you can usually find their tops for like 
three, four dollars, depending on the brand, obviously. But um, I find that Goodwill is is higher price as well. Um, you know, but the general idea, if you go to any thrift store, you can usually you can find those tops for super cheap. You know, less than ten bucks. And if you unravel them, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of yard yardage you get on that. So yeah, definitely go check her out and give her some love. Throw yarn in her window, you know, subscribe. And um, so yeah, and um, go check out her giveaways. Next, and oh, actually, the last one for this week is Marsh Knitting 101. Yeah, and two, tell both Big Crafter and Marsh Knitting 101 that I sent you sent you their sent you guys their way. Um, she's also a, a new channel. Um, she's got, I think, a little bit over 100 subscribers. And she's doing a giveaway right now of two different prizes of yarn. So yeah, go check out her video. The, the um, links to their videos will be in the description. Um, and yeah, so that's it for this week's giveaway roundup. And on to my current whip. So, if you watched my last video, you've seen that the shawl that I was making, um, designed by Siren's Crochet, I will link her channel again to the particular um, shawl that I'm working on, that I'm following her tutorial on. Oh, let me find the, here we go. So if you remember last time I showed it to you, I was able to fit it within the screen, but now I can't because it's about doubled in size. So. so, I mean, I could stop there. You know, it will it'll pretty much hit the bottom of my back like this, but um, I think I will go ahead and make it quite a bit larger and use, both, use up both skeins. So I already started on the second skein just a little bit. So I'm thinking, you know, one skein was just a little bit smaller than that. So you can imagine double this then. I guess, you know, I will see. Because according to Siren, she used um, yarn art flowers. And it was like, the cake was like, uh, thousand yards, a little over a thousand yards for that one cake. And with two skeins of this, it doesn't even equal a thousand yards. So, but um, yeah, she said she used the whole cake, as far as I remember. And um, it was quite a bit, it was quite a big shawl. So I guess I'll see. I'll see as I continue on and continue to work on this and see how big it is as it goes and see if I will use up both skeins. This is, um, this is also a super fine, just like the yarn art flowers that she used. Super, it was super fine as well. So obviously super fine takes a lot longer to work, but I just love, I just like the fabric that it creates. It's not so thick. I, I prefer the super fine. And so, especially for here, we, I definitely don't want a worsted weight, you know, and super fine will work just fine for the climate here. Um, this, this should be good for if she's in the office or if she's on the bus, and it's, it's a little too cold in the AC. This should definitely, you know, keep her warm in that instance and not be overly hot. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because too, this, I thought this was actually cotton, but it's not. It's um, polyester and acrylic, I think. I can't remember now. But it was definitely not cotton. For some reason, I thought when I when I put this on my wish list and my friend bought it for me, I thought this was cotton. But anyway, either way, it's fine because it's at least it's um, super fine, so it's not a heavy material. And um, yeah, so that's my progress on it. I definitely in the last two weeks, you know, it pretty much doubled in size. And um, that's really the only one, the only thing I'm working on right now. Any, any, whenever I have fi time, find time to work on crochet, this is what I'm working on because I want to get it finished so I can finally gift it. And um, yeah, it's, um, I guess that's a huge motivation for me to not touch anything else, even though I have other whips I still haven't finished. My unicorn, um, anyway, so yeah. So as soon as I get this one finished, it's already taken me like, gosh, I think nine hours so far and um, 
yeah, I was not expecting it to take that long. But anyway. And for this week's share of non-crochet channel that I like to watch is called Royalty Soaps. That's one thing that I wanted to do a long time ago. I wanted to get into soaping and creating my own soaps, cold process soap, and just never, you know, just been uh, was waiting on funds to be able to get the supplies I need because I need oil, I need the molds, I need lye, and other things that, you know, just never, just didn't end up getting it. And then, and then I got hooked on to crochet, so, but I do actually, I really do still want to do soaping, making my own cold process soaps. And it's I'm just always just so fascinated that um, watching others making their soaps and the designs that they, that, that come out of it and all that stuff. So, um, even if you don't soap make, or if you know if you don't make soap, you know, check out Royalty Soap. She's so fun to watch, and um, I love to watch to see all the stuff that she comes up with, the designs. And it's just too amazing the, the work that goes into it. And so, yeah, that's one of the, one of the channels I wanted to shout out today for this week and non crochet. And um, let me know what you think of her channel. If you already do watch her channel, there's just and there's just so many. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it's a Korean lady, and she does cold process soaps, and her soaps are just absolutely incredible. Um, I will go ahead and link her channel in the description, and um, but like very different too, very different from royalty soaps. Royalty soaps is um, like I don't know, I don't know if there's a name for it, but hers are just. A lot of a lot of her designs are really kind of like what she does on top of the of the the loaf mold. Like no, like when she makes the soap, it's, she pours it into what they call a loaf mold. mold you know, like a, just a long rectangular mold. And um, you know, she'll do designs and the colors and stuff. You know, at the base, you know, the main soap. But then at the top, she'll like use like bakers do and use. Um, you know, piping bags and piping tips and things like that. And she'll, like, like decorating a cake, she decorates the soap, you know, with, with different um, piping tips that creates the different designs and then puts like little, little miniature soap shapes, like, you know, what they call emb embeds and shapes of, you know, fruit or a leaf or, you know, just all different things, like little, just little items. You know, but but it's, but it's soap, and you know uses that to decorate the top of the soap as well. But um, the Korean lady, what she does is, she doesn't do all the stuff on top of the the soap. But her her main thing is the design of the soap itself. It is just like amazing. They're like landscapes. It is just a work of art, and I just can't imagine the time that goes, the time and the you know work that goes into designing it even. And then make, mixing up the different colored soaps and things to to pipe into the mold, and um, I could just watch that for hours. It's just incredible how how it even comes out. Um, just amazing. But anyway, so um, yeah, go definitely go check them out. And um, I wanted to ask you guys, what um, like old movie or show have you? watched lately or re-watched lately uh, for me I finished watching the whole entire season of, or not the season the whole entire series of Star Trek Voyager recently you know I think it was nine seasons was it or seven seasons I can't remember how many seasons it was now but all of a sudden I just was like you know what I'm gonna I wanna start watching Star Trek Voyager again and I actually watched every single episode, and I realized I actually never did watch the very ending of it. Um, I don't know. I got. I don't know what it, what, what happened at that time when it, when it ended in the '90s or late '90s into 2000. 
I think it was, I think it ended sometime, 2000, I can't remember, whenever it was that it ended. But I realized I never actually ended up watching the, the later, the last season, I think. But so anyway, I did. So I watched the whole thing from beginning to end. And um, it, was, it was still enjoyable. It was still enjoyable, even for the episodes that I do remember watching. Um, how many Trekkies are out there in, in my YouTube family? Um, so yeah, so I'm curious, you know, what, what kind of shows or movies do you like to rewatch? And so um, Star Trek Voyager, that was, that was actually my very first time rewatching the whole entire series. And um, as far as for a movie goes, um, I actually watched this one several times and I haven't watched it recently, but I think I will be because I think, I can't remember what, something brought that back to memory, you know, reminded me of that movie and then I think I, I need to watch it again. It's just so hilarious. It's called The Gods Must Be Crazy. And it was something my mom turned me on to, this movie. She was watching it one day, obviously back, well, long, long time ago when I was still living with her. Um, and it's a, I, I don't even know when it was made, 70s or 80s, I think around that time. And I think it was set in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. But um, it is just such a hilarious movie. Um, I don't know if I can probably do a good job of giving you a synopsis, but it's, um, it has like, the, the, it has these natives, it shows you kind of like the journey of the um, Aborigines, I think, I don't even know if they are the Aborigines, if, if it was, and it, but yeah, it was in Australia, I'm pretty sure, but I don't even know if they, they're called Aborigines or not, um, but, but they're this, this, no, it's this tribe of people that they actually um, don't wear clothes, you know, obviously just have some, a little bit of cloth covering the private areas. And it was a, a journey of the two young sons. I can't remember what they had, at, oh, because they found some, they found this, this item, which was a, a, a glass soda bottle. And they're like, somehow it ended up nearby where they were. They found and discovered it and, and they, they, I, I, sorry if I'm totally messing this up just not it's been a while since I watched it but the father who found it sent the kids on a journey to go return it to the gods for whatever reason they thought it came from the gods so they sent the kids back home oh because somehow that thing like started causing trouble this glass soda bottle because of, well, because of some whoever it was that found it you know it started causing trouble because everyone in the village wanted it and so they started fighting over it and created a big old mess, you know, division and just strife and, and stuff, you know, because people are fighting over it. So the, 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 I don't know if he was chief or not, but anyway, the father of the two boys that were sent out on this journey to go return it to the gods, you know, so it kind of is, is, so the movie is based around them. And then this other guy who was just like a bumbling, not a bumbling idiot, but just very clumsy. And, and he had to go pick up this lady who, who was flying in from somewhere to teach, um, to teach at a, like a, a um, you know, a, to teach at a school there in wherever the, this other guy lived. And um, it was just so funny because, anyway, I, I, I'm just, I'm doing such a bad job of explaining it. But anyway, so it's between the, the guy, the bumbling guy and the two kids trying to return the, the last soda bottle to the gods. And, you know, and then their, their paths meet. And then just the whole thing was just a mess. It was just a huge, um, not huge, it's just hilarious. It's just a hilarious movie. So I um, recommend, highly recommend it. If you haven't already seen it before, give it a shot. It's, you, it'll have you laughing so hard, so hard. Um, I can still remember my mom just, it, she's laughing her head off because of the movie. And um, so, yeah, and there's actually two of them. There's the Gods Must Be Crazy and then the sequel, Gods Must Be Crazy too. I think my favorite is the first one. But anyway, yeah, just check, go check it out. Sorry for doing such a horrible job of trying to tell you what it's about, but I'm not just, I'm just not very good at that. Anyway. Okay, so now on to the joke for this week. What the grapes grapes say when it got crushed? 
Nothing. It just let out a little whine. Ah ha ha. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope it gave you a chuckle. I just want to, you know, make sure to give a little laugh. We all need a laugh every day, you know. So, and now I just want to leave you with this. The scripture that I got for today, the scripture of the day, Psalm 59, 16. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. That was Psalms 59, 16. All right, so yeah, this time I just decided to just I wanted to read it instead of, I normally put it at the end, the very end of my videos, but I decided I wanted to just go ahead and read it instead. So I hope you enjoyed my podcast for this week, and I hope you all have a great week, great day, and I will see you next time. God bless you guys. Bye.